Grace and peace to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to this online worship service of Peachtree Road United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us as we continue our series on the Ten Commandments, Thunder on the Mountain. Now, at the sound of the bells, please prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. May the love, mercy, and, and grace of God the Creator, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit the Sustainer be with you and also with you. Faithful God, you have called us into covenant with yourself and with each other. You are faithful in all your words and deeds and have instructed us to do the same. Covenantal God, your word is truth, and there is no falsehood in you. You have exalted your word above your name. Trustworthy God, give us the courage to speak and live truthfully each day so that we will honor you in all we do and in our relationship with each other.
Join me in the prayer of confession. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. God, who is truth, we confess that we do not always practice speaking or living the truth. So often we violate the sanctity of truth to hide our misdeeds, even though we are committing a greater misdeed when we do. When we lie to each other, we break the covenant of trust and weaken our relationship with those we love. Forgive us, we pray. Give us the courage to resist the seeds of lies planted by the enemy, who is the father of all lies. Remind us that you desire truth in the inward parts and that we honor you when we speak and live the truth. Amen. Hear the good news. God is merciful and forgiving, quick to pardon. God has given us the spirit of power to resist the vice of the lying one and to live in truth with each other. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let me add my greeting to you this morning. It is so good to have you worshiping with us today here at Peachtree Road. We do pray that God would bless you as we worship together. And now it's time for us to come together with the children to talk a little bit. I've got a story for the children, and so I would invite them to come closer to the screen this morning uh, so that I may share with you this story. It's, it's about a, a, a pig by the name of Slander. And you know that pigs live in different places, like Porky Pig lives in a house, and uh, he's got a very nice house and nice clothes, and he does well. But Slander lived in a mud puddle. Uh, Slander was always dirty. Slander was always hanging out with the wrong crowd. And Slander was always talking ugly about other pigs. And he sort of enjoyed just wallowing in the mud. He just enjoyed uh, being dirty all the time. He enjoyed the gossip with other pigs. And then one day, as this beautiful girl pig was going by, suddenly a gnat flew into her eye just as she was going by slander. And he looked up and it looked like she winked at him. And just like that, he was in love. And he knew the only way to get her attention was to sort of get himself cleaned up. And so he started taking regular baths. He, he started dressing nicely. He combed his hair. He was very helpful to other people. He got involved in the church. And, and his life kind of completely turned around. And they ended up getting married and living happily ever after together with each other. Now, one day, Slander got a phone call from one of his old buddies that he used to hang out with uh, down in the slop. And he said, oh, Slander, I want to tell you about Mr. Jones. Oh, I heard some delicious gossip about him. And you know what happened with Slander? He felt his stomach sort of turn. And he thought, oh, I don't want to hear anything bad about Mr. Jones. And so he shouted into the phone, don't tell me anything bad about Mr. Jones. I like Mr. Jones. I don't want to hear any bad stuff about him. 
In fact, Slander dropped right down to his knees and began to pray for his buddy that was gossiping about Mr. Jones. And Slander started doing that all the time. Whenever he would hear somebody wanting to put somebody else down, he would start praying for them. And I hope that Slander never has to pray for you. I hope that you will always be one who spreads good words about other people. And so, this morning, I would invite you to pray after me. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace and the opportunity to pass it along. Help us to remember the lesson to say good things about others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a good week. One of our great privileges is to pray with and for one another. We invite you to remember these persons in your prayers today, but also throughout the week in area hospitals and rehab facilities that we are aware of. Betty Lee Kennedy at Northside, Luther House at St. Joseph's, and J.J. Joseph at Lindbrook. We extend our Christian sympathy to Rosa Sumter, Ann Morey, and family on the death of their father, Ben Tarbutton, on June the 8th. And we rejoice with Fisher and Sarah Marietta on the birth of twins, James Owen and Madeline Joe on June the 9th. Letza Marietta is the proud grandmother. I now invite you to join me in prayer. Almighty God, you lovingly created each and every one of us, and to you every life is holy, precious, and sacred. We worship you, we praise you, we glorify and magnify you this morning, not only for what you have given to us, but for who you are. You are the God who created us, who breathed the breath of life into us, who provides for us and who loves us without exception, hesitation, limit, or reservation. You are a God who is loving and merciful, compassionate and full of patience that never runs out, a lover of justice and a maker of peace. And as we pray this morning, we remember the words that you have given to us, that we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. This morning, we hear the echoes of words from our past, Words that ring in our ears and settle in our hearts as we reckon with the death of another of your beloved children in this city. We remember the truth of Dr. King's words that are both timeless and timely, that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And so we pray this morning for the courage to face and to tell the truth. We pray for the endurance to be led by it and rooted in it. We pray for the strength to resist the pull of discomfort and distraction, and instead to live lives that are rooted and grounded in your strength and your love. This morning, we pray for the memory to remember that you are a God who seeks justice for the oppressed, a God who hears the cries of those who are beaten down, a God who liberates those who can't breathe, and a God who rescues those who have knees placed upon their necks. And yes, this morning we do pray for peace, but not an empty peace that allows us to look away. We pray for peace, but not an easy one that prevents us from naming the evils of racism. We do pray for peace, but not a comfortable one that excuses us from doing the faithful work for such a time as this. Instead, we pray for a peace that cries out for justice, This morning we pray for a peace that compels us to live lives of costly love that flow from the conviction that every life is sacred because every life is a gift from you. We pray for peace that will not allow us to rest until names such as Rayshard and Brianna, Ahmad and George are not names made famous as those who have died at the intersection of racism and violence but instead have summoned us to our better angels so that each and every person has the freedom and opportunity 
to live full and glorious lives that radiate your love. And so this morning, as we pray with and for the city of Atlanta, we pray prayers of intercession for the family of Rayshard Brooks, child of God, sheep of your fold, a lamb of your flock. We ask you to draw near his family and those who loved him, and that by your grace never again would another family have to endure pain and tragedy such as the one they are facing. We pray for our mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, and for our city council, particularly council members Matt Westmoreland and J.P. Matsakite, members of your body here at Peachtree Road. We pray that you would grant them your wisdom, your compassion, and your peace as they seek to lead our city with wisdom and mercy, justice, and peace. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who suffered for us and whose spirit both calls us together and propels us forward to work until all will be made right, and who still teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We believe that the work of the church has never been more important, that the church's work to pursue love and justice and hope and peace. And we can only do that through your generosity and your giving. We invite you at this time to give. You may give on our website or at our, at our church app, or you may mail your checks to the church office. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray that you would use these gifts given freely in response to your love and that you would use them, multiply and magnify them for your work and your kingdom. Amen.
Our scripture today is, comes from Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. No doubt you are familiar with the old song about heaven that is entitled, An Unclouded Day. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a land far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Uh, Probably like me, you have been yearning for an unclouded day. For it seems to me that the storm clouds have been rising lately. In fact, it feels like we are living in the midst of a perfect storm. Three months ago, uh, the hurricane hit us of the pandemic of a health crisis. And soon after that, we saw on the horizon another storm heading our way. Uh, Economic and unemployment crisis that is unprecedented in our time. And now we have been rocked by a third storm, a social crisis that is centered upon race and the role of the police in our community. And it feels like all three of these storms have hit us all at the same time. Do you feel the earth shifting beneath your feet? Do you feel like you might not survive this storm? Well, the image that I have in my mind this morning is of Jesus in a boat with his disciples. They're on the Sea of Galilee. All is calm, but then a storm comes out of nowhere. And suddenly there are four and five foot waves. The wind is blowing and the waves are crashing over the bow of the boat. And the disciples fear that they will perish. Jesus is asleep in the boat and they wake him up. And they say, Lord, do you not care that we're perishing? And Jesus stands up and he speaks, peace, be still. And just like that, all is calm. I feel like we are living in those days right now. We're all in the boat together. And suddenly, out of nowhere, has come an unprecedented storm. Three storms, a perfect storm, is upon us. We feel the wind and the waves. We are concerned that we are going to perish. And it's time for those of us who call ourselves followers of Jesus to wake up, to stand up, And to speak words of truth and peace to the storms that rage around us. To speak words of God that are true and trustworthy. To bear witness to the goodness of God. Our commandment for this morning is you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. At first blush, my mind immediately goes to a courtroom. I imagine the witness sitting in the witness box and being sworn in. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. In Israel, it was important for a person to tell the truth. And it's important in our day as well. Last weekend, I watched a movie on Netflix, Just Mercy. 
It is the true story of a, an innocent man who was convicted of a crime and placed on death row. All of that happened because of the so-called testimony of a false witness. Someone who swore to tell the truth and then did not. And this man's life was turned completely upside down. His family's life was turned upside down. And my heart broke And I wept as I watched as people refused to reconsider the evidence in this innocent man's case. As I said, it's important to tell the truth. And that is a part of what this commandment means. When you're in a court of law, you have to tell the truth. But that's only a part of it. And you knew I was going to get to another part, didn't you? In in each week, we've considered these commandments and we've discovered that there's always a deeper level to the commandment, a spiritual level. And the spiritual level in this one is that truth-telling enables us to have good relationships with each other. In fact, Good relationships are dependent upon us being truthful with one another. Imagine someone that you care very much about. And and think back to when you first met that person. You didn't know that person. You couldn't read their mind. You didn't understand their body language. You couldn't even interpret their tone of voice. In those first days, all you really knew was this is a person that is interesting to me and I would like to get to know this person better. And as you spend time with each other, you begin to share things with each other. You tell each other your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, your fears. And as you share with each other, you sense your relationship becoming deeper and deeper. And you feel like this is someone you can tell your innermost thoughts with. You can share those and those will be valued by the other person. You're developing a sense of intimacy with the other person. Now, suppose you found out the other person had not been truthful with you. Suppose the other person had lied to you about themselves, about their background, about who they really are. It shatters the trust. And at that moment, you feel the distance created between you and the other person. Relationships are dependent upon telling the truth to each other. And maybe that's one of the flaws of our society and our day and time. For some people care so little about telling the truth. They don't call it lying. They call it stretching the truth or exaggeration. Or they may even call it spin. Spin is kind of a political term getting your story and your interpretation out there early. So that becomes the narrative against which everything else is measured. Give you an example of that. Uh, Last week, as we were seeing the protests in our country playing out across the nation, I saw a picture on social media of the Uh, Lincoln Memorial in Washington, and it was covered in graffiti. And the caption under it was, uh, protesters do not even uh, respect our history or our national monuments. And I have to admit, I was outraged. And I thought to myself, they've gone too far. And then I investigated a little deeper. It had been photoshopped. There's nothing changed about the Lincoln Memorial. It has been preserved. It is pristine. But someone wanted to get their message out there and did so in an insidious way. I am aware that 
There are people who uh, are not acquainted with the truth. Uh, They would rather tell a lie than tell the truth. You may be familiar with George Costanza, the character on Seinfeld, who once said to his friend, Jerry, it's not a lie if you believe it. Again, that's one of the flaws of our society. And I'm afraid that social media merely exacerbates the problem. I read on social media the other day a quote attributed to Lincoln. You cannot believe everything you read on the internet. The reality is there are some who are not committed to telling the truth. And we need to understand that our very relationships, our communities are built on telling the truth, being truthful with one another. And that's another part of what this commandment means. I don't want to leave this commandment with pointing something out else out to you. And it's the entirety of the commandment. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. I think that it is wrong to speak ill of our neighbors. I think that it is evil to intentionally speak evil of our neighbors. The commandment invites us to be truthful about our neighbors and to not run them through the mud, to slander them. Earlier this year, I had the opportunity to travel with a group of folks from the church to the Holy Land. And after leaving Israel, I flew down to Kenya uh, to see the work that is ongoing as a result of our church in partnership with others in Kenya. And on one of those many flights that I was on during that time, I saw the movie uh, about Mr. Rogers. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. You know Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, the Presbyterian minister who had the children's show for all those years. Looked upon as a hero in our nation because of his compassion, his empathy, especially for people who were hurting, and his gentleness. The amazing thing about Mr. Rogers is he often took on difficult subjects, divorce and death and race relations with his children's show. He modeled for us how to have those frank, honest, truthful conversations that are so important to have. And he did it with honesty and integrity and with compassion. A wonderful model for us, so needed today. This week was supposed to be the week of annual conference for those of us, North Georgia United Methodists, to meet in Athens. Of course, it has been postponed. But I got to thinking back to last year's conference. Dr. Gary Mason was the teacher. Mason is well known for his work in uh, brokering peace in places like the Middle East and his home country of Northern Ireland. He's no stranger to those of us here at Peachtree Road. He has taught in several of our Sunday school classes. And I remember some of the points that he made to us as we work towards the ministry of reconciliation. He said, first of all, before you criticize somebody else, be willing to criticize yourself. He reminded us that repentance precedes reconciliation. He reminded us that uh, reconciliation means dialogue with another person with whom you disagree. He also encouraged us 
telling us that the gospel of Jesus Christ can lead to reconciliation. We have the prescription for the world, in other words. And finally, he reminded us to focus most of all on hearing one another. And second, to focus upon not just hearing one another, but also learning how to disagree with each other. Learning how to disagree with each other. We're not all called to agree with each other. My truth may be different than your truth. There is God's truth. And we're on the journey to God's truth. And so we have to share with each other and respect each other and learn to live with each other. These are wise words for us to consider in these days as we deal with the storms that are pressing in upon us. The storm erupted again this weekend here in Atlanta. There was an unarmed black man in a routine stop by police that ended up in this man, Richard Brooks, losing his life. And I know that people immediately want to go with who is to blame and who can we hold responsible for it. But we need to say to one another, enough is enough. We need to say to each other, We can try to figure out who's to blame and who's responsible till Jesus comes back. But it's not going to do us any good. These are the cards that we have been dealt, and we need to learn to play the cards. No more lamentation about, oh, the times in which we live. We need to find ways to take action. And I think that those of us in the church take our cue from Jesus who woke up and stood up and spoke words that are true. Words of justice, words of love, words of mercy, words of peace. Because with our words, we need to create actions that enable our prayer that we pray every Sunday to come to fruition Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That we live in harmony with each other, even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of an economic and employment crisis, even in the midst of civil unrest. We find a way to live as kingdom people. We look for and we pray for God's guidance in the midst of it. And the word that we hear today is to live fully into this commandment. Do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Instead, encourage your neighbor. Inspire your neighbor. Speak words of peace to your neighbor and live in harmony with your neighbor. And one last word, the assurance of God is given to us that like a bridge over troubled waters, God will lay God's self down. Do you believe that? If you do, would you stand where you are and join with me in affirming your faith? And let us together unite in this historic confession of our Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And all God's people said, Amen. In these days that we admit are difficult, we also celebrate that God has given us the power, God has given us the grace, God has given us His Son, Jesus, that enables us to not only survive but to thrive in these times and to offer what we have to the world. What we have is God's love and mercy and grace. 
And that's what I send you out with today. To be his people, to take courage, to be not afraid, to be willing to wake up, to stand up, and to speak God's words that are true and trustworthy. As you go from this service of worship, I pray that you would go with God's blessing. And now may the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you both now and forevermore. And may the peace of Christ be always with you.